The following program is a presentation of Milwaukee Public Television's Finding Work initiative. Goodwill Industries of Southeastern Wisconsin is proud to support MPTV and the Finding Work initiative. It's hard work finding a job. If you need help, turn to the Goodwill Workforce Connection Center. They can assist you with resume writing and interviewing skills, plus give you access to computers and job fairs. Believe in the power of work. Manpower Group is proud to support MPTV and the Finding Work Initiative. To further explore the resources available at Manpower Group, visit manpowergroup.com. You got to make work fun, you know. You can't come on a job and don't want to do it. You got to make it fun. Thirds to three quarters of job opportunities and employment opportunities are found via the networking. Go out and talk to people. Good evening and welcome to the September edition of Jobs, the broadcast component for Milwaukee Public Television's Finding Work Initiative. I'm Denise Calloway. And I'm Mark Singrist. Each month, Jobs will offer profiles of Wisconsinites engaged in finding work. Some will have found employment, some will be seeking, and some will be assisting people in their searches. This month, we'll meet an executive who pursued a variety of interests before landing at the top, a woman whose professional career started in her 40s and an advisor to seniors who are still interested in working. But first, finding a real calling in life can mean a lot more than job satisfaction. It can also have a big impact on the lives of others. That's certainly true for a Milwaukee area man who rediscovered his roots in a very unlikely place. All right, John, let's show them how it's done. <laughs> it's a hot August morning at the Milwaukee County Farm in Franklin. 43-year-old Rich Richardson is busy picking zucchini. It's hard work, but he loves it. I get up at 5 a.m., and there's not a morning that I lay there and think to myself, boy, I wish I could just take the day off, mm. even though I didn't get home till 9 o'clock last night. Um, I don't know that the, it's just a feeling in here. That's the best part because it doesn't feel like a job. The men who work for him at Hunger Task Force enjoy their days too. No, it's not all peaches and cream, you know. You got to be committed to it. You got to want it. You got to make work fun, you know. You can't come on a job and don't want to do it. You got to make it fun. They have a special bond. Get some water. Get some water. All right, take a minute, take a break. Richardson left a successful IT career to rediscover his agricultural roots. Okay. And over my own business as a consultant, I had at one point I had 10 consultants with uh, $2 million a year in revenue. How many empties you got? He cut his teeth on a neighbor's dairy farm near Mount Horeb at the age of 12. He also has a background in military intelligence. We can come back and do the rest in the morning if we want to. As head of the county farm and fish hatchery, he mentors participants in a transitional jobs program. It's a relationship built on mutual respect. Okay. You want my job? It's yours. <laughs> I'd be happy to trade jobs. I really have, I hope, a good attitude every single day trying to you know, teach them, even though we're out, whether it be picking rocks, picking zucchini, planting, we're in the heat that, uh, um, you know, you can still, even if you hate the job that you're doing today, right this right, minute, you can still have a good attitude about it. Um, and when they see me out there and, and I'm smiling and joking and working just right with them, I think that means a lot. Together, they help feed Milwaukee area hungry families. Work your way south, because I don't think anybody's hit this from the looks of it. Some people might think he gave up a lot to go back to farming, but Rich Richardson doesn't see it that way. These guys are going to bring in probably uh, about eight or 9,000 pounds of zucchini today. And, uh, you know, as we know, all of that goes out on somebody's plate by tomorrow night. Uh, the bulk of that will be on somebody's table. It's a great feeling. The Transitional Jobs Program offers hope and a chance to learn new skills during a tough economy. 
What are you learning out here? 33-year-old Melvin Cooper of Brown Deer is among the participants. I'm learning forklift training, fish hatchery, how to garden, um, you know, warehouse, a lot of warehouse work. I had a little stuff I had to learn about. They, they sharpened me up on. And a lot of farm work. Actually, you know, I learned a lot out here. This is the first taste of farming for many of the guys. Every day is something different. It's like you learn so much, you do so much. I never thought I would be gardening. I never thought I would be taking care of fish. 38-year-old Ernest Tail of Milwaukee enjoys the mission and camaraderie. I learned how to work a job every day, to be motivated about having a job. You know, I like on weekends, I still wake up at 6 o'clock. I never did that before. I wake up ready to go to work. Oh, I, I don't have to work today. So I look forward to Mondays. Some of the men come from difficult backgrounds. As a mentor and manager, Rich Richardson draws from his own life experiences. He says growing up in rural Wisconsin had its challenges too. I, mean, I grew up very, very poor in my family. Uh, I did have, you know, both my parents, which were, you know, which was awesome, but we didn't have a lot. Uh, so I grew up in maybe similar situation to some of these guys. We were somewhat on, um, my mother was on WIC. Um, that I remember saying in line at the church to get some food. And, uh, you know, I've been there. At this stage of his life, managing a farm for a nonprofit agency isn't exactly the career path he had in mind. In fact, Richardson jokes about it going in reverse. But he feels connected to the land, the families he helps feed, and the workers who are building better lives of their own. Don't worry, I'll get you on one. You too? Everybody wants, so we'll do a day of tractor training. How about that? Okay. Hunger Task Force also relies on volunteer help at the farm and throughout its food collection and distribution program. Novelist George Eliot once said, it's never too late to be who you might have been. For older people seeking work, those words are truly inspirational, and they are near and dear to L.A. Mixter Keller. Paul Kaplan has that story. Meet Ellie Mixter Keller. Her career as a jobs coach is only a couple of years old. She had been in the advertising world her entire professional life. In the height of the recession, she was let go. After spending months sending resumes out, she knew she couldn't get through the job process alone. She needed support and got it at networking groups. That's a blessing to realize that if you just ask, people will give. And I think I just, I, I never had to ask before. When she was downsized from the advertising business and she was in the business forever and a day, uh, I think it, it, it kind of knocked the wind out of her sails. You know, two thirds to three quarters of job opportunities and employment opportunities are found via the networking. Go out and talk to people. That's been one of our driving forces. You know, how do you maintain pride and dignity? You know, of these job seekers because if you don't have it, it's going to be, I mean, it's tough anyway. If you don't have it, it's going to be even more difficult. Ellie attended up to 10 networking groups a week, listening, learning, self-assessing, and figuring out her next move. So what I found after hitting my own very low rock bottom, because I got no return from all the resumes I sent out, and I started feeling very badly about myself, was I found these job networking support groups and these counselors that I worked with really helped me rebuild myself now in a new kind of um, employment market and reassess where you are and what you have to offer. So she used her advertising and marketing skills to learn about the processes and procedures best for modern day job search. You know, I think who I have always been is somebody who helps people through a tough crossroads in their life. And um, whether you're in job search or you're an elderly person trying to move into assisted living or you're a product trying to move into a new market, that's really who I am and what I do. Part of my how I'm wired and part of my training as well. And she learned to lead people with energy, confidence, and enthusiasm to keep them positive and moving forward. She volunteered to lead job support networking groups 
for almost a year. So one of the things that I did during that time that I was unemployed was teach what had been taught to me. Um, I actually got a job because I volunteered to do this for free. And now I'm getting paid to do this. So there's not anything on my resume that uh, says I'm an HR professional or I don't have a psychology degree. And I push kind of hard. So if I push you too hard, you need to say, okay, back off. She put her newfound expertise to use as a jobs coach at Interfaith, a nonprofit helping older adults in Milwaukee County maintain their independence. And have you been looking for a while now or just? Yes, I've been looking for a while. Oh, you're 81 years old. Yes, I am. Wow, good for you. She's also helping folks from all backgrounds. I had my own pastry shop and it was doing quite well for about 10 years and they closed the road in front of me. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. Oh. <laughs> There's plenty of job networking groups around southeastern Wisconsin. If you go, you very well may see Ellie Mixter Keller preaching what she has learned from her mentors when she was unemployed and wondering where to go next. Come to a place like this every week if you can because it holds you up, because it sustains you. It keeps you moving forward. It gives you friends that you have gone through the trenches with that become invariably very, very close to you. Uh, the networking, um, who you meet and who you hear about people in this town you've never met, but you now have a chance to because of these people that have met them. These groups and these other people that validate that you still have self-worth, that you still have value. I went to those like sun, sunflowers to sunshine. I mean, go find positive things that make you feel good about yourself and stay away from the Debbie Downer stuff. Turn off the news. The news is ridiculous, no offense. You know, it's, it's ridiculous. What do you care what the unemployment figures are? You're one person. You only need to find a job. As a lifetime advertising executive, Ellie Mixter Keller has found her current calling in helping unemployed workers look at themselves and ask how they can stand out from the clutter. Vanilla may be the best-selling ice cream. However, most people buy it because they want to put stuff on it. You need to tell me, are you Sprinkles? Are you Rocky Road? Are you Crunched Up Heath Bar? Are you Hot Fudge? Are you Caramel? There's too many people in the marketplace to be vanilla. There's too many people just to be everything to everybody. You gotta stand up, put the suit on of who you are and what you got and own that and go sell that. Let the world figure out whether they want you or not. We'd like to take just a moment to remind you about the Finding Work website at www.findingwork.tv. It offers a variety of services and links to various agencies mentioned on the program, including free legal advice regarding employment issues. The address again is www.findingwork.tv. I was in that store countless times prior to actually being an employee there. But that first day was still really scary because I remember, you know, having to answer the phone and take call-in orders and learn the cash register and it was very different when you're an employee. Most people don't begin their careers in their 40s, but we met a woman who had to find a job when her husband lost his. Because of that, she discovered special skills and used them to enter a field she never expected. Joanne Williams has her story. Sherry Schober loves to solve problems. Uh, I'm basically the person that brings them together to take care, to try to find out while something, why something fell apart, why something's not working. I'm the person that kind of ties up all the loose ends. As long as they involve machines, and technical diagrams and wires. These are the electrical controls for the machine. It's basically an electrical cabinet. Sherry is an electrical engineer. She knows her way around equipment like this and feels right at home in the shop. The smell of the shop, this one doesn't smell like oil. They usually smell like oil. I feel right at home. But Sherry can't find a company to put her skills and enthusiasm to work. She's been out of a job since April when DRS Power and Control Technologies lost a big government contract. P&H Mining had already laid her off in 2009. They geared up. They were they geared up for this big AC drag line that they they uh, were going to make. And as far as I know, they haven't sold any even yet. So they geared up all these engineers and all these quality people, and, and uh, one by one department. 
they reduce the force, reduction in force. Matter of fact, in, I was in the electrical products division, and to my knowledge, that position isn't filled today. Sherry is not a quitter, and looking back on how she became an electrical engineer, it was as much fate as it was faith. Matter of fact, I hadn't even graduated from high school. And I was, at, I, I worked a couple of years, and then I was a stay-at-home mom. I was cooking for the parish priest, and my husband got laid off. I had three kids at home, and he got laid off in uh, 82. And there he was, you know, and we almost lost the house, we almost lost everything. And we had three kids. And he was off for a whole year, and I was scared. He worked some part-time jobs and things to fill in, but I couldn't find a job, he couldn't find a job. I didn't even have a high school diploma. And I said, this isn't going to happen again. Somebody's got to back up somebody. So she went to UW Waukesha and discovered her true calling, electronics. Now my background had always been in medicine. I was a nurse's aide, I worked at VA. As I look back now, I always worked with the machines. <laughs> but I, I always liked the technical things. And when they tested me, they told me I was very te technically oriented, but I shouldn't go for a four-year degree. It would be too hard. I got mad, and here I am. She got her high school diploma, took courses at Waukesha County Technical College, then at Marquette University for the electrical engineering degree. You said you were a non-traditional student. What's that? Someone who comes back after being out a number of years. Do you mind that? Oh, it was it was fun. I, I you know I I I never minded anything. I never I never saw myself as different. I didn't. I never saw myself as different. My, I, I never thought of myself as different. But looking back during the years Sherry had been at home and raising three kids, the world of work changed around her. When it came time to look for a job after getting her engineering degree, she was at a disadvantage. So she found a group called 40 Plus, a support group for baby boomers who are looking for work. I didn't know how to write a resume. Um, that would get people's attention. They helped me with that. They helped me target some companies. Uh, I eventually, and then I went, I also went out to WCTC. I got some help from them. When you went for your first jobs as an electrical engineer, how did that go? In the early days, it was, I remember one German uh, man who said to me, and I, I don't remember the name of the company, it was on the northwest side, he said, why would you want to be an engineer? Why would you want to work here with all these guys? And I said, I went to school with all these guys. You know, why wouldn't I? And uh, he said, shouldn't you be home having babies? And I said, I was home. I had my babies. <laughs> and, and, and I remember him, and then he said, don't you feel, aren't you ashamed that you'd be taking away a man's job? I said, it's an engineer's job. What's the difference if a man does it or a woman does it? So you didn't work for him. I didn't work for him. <laughs> she did find work at small companies, then her dream job at Midwest Airlines working on the planes. I was in charge of everything down in what they call the E&E &E department, down in the bowels of the plane. I used to crawl around in there. Um, I was on call. I carried a pager. I'd come in the middle of the night, you know, and. When the plane was down, uh, I was one of four electrical engineers that were in the event. I loved it. So why did you leave Midwest Airlines? They outsourced their maintenance department to New York, and they went from 23 engineers down to three. I don't know if there's even one person left from the group anymore there. I missed that job. I really enjoyed it. They, Midwest was a great company to work for. Sherry feels that she is the kind of engineer that some small to medium-sized company needs, that go-to person who turns a problem into a win-win situation. Um, basically someone who uh, takes care of quality issues, process control issues, problems in the shop. Uh, I'm a liaison between purchasing and engineering and field and engineering, manufacturing and engineering, everybody in engineering. So you giving up the search? Never. No. Oh, no. There's a place out there that just haven't found me yet.
Not all roads to a top job are the same. Some people grow up knowing exactly what they want to do in life and go for it. Others pursue a variety of interests, not realizing it's all preparation for their ultimate challenge. How do you like working here? I like the food. Yeah, yeah. right? Yeah. I know. That's one of the best parts, isn't it? It is. I know. I know. That's great. You've got a great smile, too. Thank you. You probably make all the guests really happy. Here I am, the GM. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> it's awesome. I'm on the fast track program. Yeah. <laughs> well, you do a great job. Good energy. I know yeah. that. When Christine Specht visits a cousin sub's restaurant, it's like coming home. And for good reason. It's in her DNA. Her father, Bill Specht, co-founded the Milwaukee-based company. That was two years before Christine was born. Growing up in the family business was a lesson in hard work and dedication. She was already helping out at the age of 15. It started by taking a turn behind the counter. I was so excited to start because I was finally able to earn a little money on my own. But, and I was in that store countless times prior to actually being an employee there. But that first day was still really scary because I remember, you know, having to answer the phone and take call-in orders and learn the cash register. And it was very different when you're an employee versus just being a guest or being the owner's daughter walking into the restaurant and, uh, you know, hanging out for a little bit. So, but it was great. Yeah. And Art, what's your favorite sub? Oh, i got to say it's the uh, okay. melt. The pepperoni melt? Yep, the pepperoni uh, melt with extra jalapeno. Oh, that sounds so good. That is a gut yeah. buster. Oh, yeah. Oh, my gosh. That sounds it. great. As a teenager, Christine Specht had little ambition to run the company. She was happy enough just to have an after-school job. I absolutely believe that it's important for young people to have a job when they're 15 through 17 in those formative years, but particularly in food service because there's nothing like uh, serving the guest, literally um, maintaining the restaurant, even, even that those cleaning chores and things like that. All of that teaches skill sets that individuals probably won't appreciate then, but when they're in the workforce, they'll certainly appreciate it. So you graduate in May then? Or? Yeah. Fantastic. Oh, that's fantastic. But then we're going to lose you maybe. Well, maybe. Well, Art. Yeah. Christine went on to earn a bachelor's degree in criminology at Marquette. Oh, then it was is, off yeah, to Florida a for a year it's of volunteer work store. with homeless families. Yeah, it's a lot she of fun. later received her master's in public administration oh, at American University. I know. And in 2001, Christine was back home, only this time as head of Cousins Human Resources Department. What was that like for you? You've been away for so long. It was really exciting, but it was a whole new level of responsibility. I was really excited to start because many of the people that I remember who worked for Cousins still work for Cousins. So that was great. It was kind of like coming home, you know, coming back to the business that I, I knew so many of the individuals that are, were working in the corporate office. And um, so that was, it was a little bit comforting, but it was daunting because I was coming back in a whole new role. Her confidence grew as HR manager and she and proved her worth. Yeah. Three years ago, good, Christine no was named president yeah, and chief so operating busy, officer. You know, she's not only the boss, she's the public face yeah, of the company. Here's take so much pride in producing just the best loaves of bread every single day. Our bread is so authentic. It's Italian, it has a softer inside. Connecting with customers and colleagues alike is essential. Your different academic experiences and life experiences really contribute to being a well-rounded leader, doesn't it? It does, because everything that I did in college was um, really focused on people as I look back on it now, and it's all relational, about building those relationships with people. Your volunteer service, all of those things help me shape a different perspective and maybe a more realistic perspective of what happens out there in the world. And, um, but I, I believe it's helped me uh, define my value system and what I believe today, and then I can apply those things and apply my relationship skills and what I learned there to what I do today, most certainly. Today, Cousin Subs is about 150 locations strong and growing. Growth comes by maintaining a talented team and a clear vision. As a second generation boss, Christine understands the pressure to succeed. She loves her job and she wants the rest of her team to love what they're doing as well. And it sets the tone for the guests' entire experience. So we want our 
we want our staff, our crew managers, we want them having a great time, um, you know, getting their job done, meeting the needs of the guests, but enjoying it because that will just emulate to the guests. They'll feel that different experience, they'll feel excited. The lessons Christine Specht learned as a kid behind the counter still apply. She's also drawing on her varied experience and faith in the family business. Back then, keeping the customers first, happy was an after-school job. Spot. Now, really it's her career. They know you guys really care about what you're doing. So, yeah, I think yeah. do and that's our program for this month. Remember, the Finding Work website can be found at www.findingwork.tv. We hope you will join us on October 27th at 6.30 p.m. for the next edition of Jobs. Until then, thanks for watching and good night. Good night. Goodwill Industries of Southeastern Wisconsin is proud to support MPTV and the Finding Work Initiative. It's hard work finding a job. If you need help, turn to the Goodwill Workforce Connection Center. They can assist you with resume writing and interviewing skills, plus give you access to computers and job fairs. Believe in the power of work. Manpower Group is proud to support MPTV and the Finding Work Initiative. To further explore the resources available at Manpower Group, visit manpowergroup.com. The preceding program was a presentation of Milwaukee Public Television's Finding Work Initiative.